The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. You know, friends, nothing, no, nothing beats better taste. And remember... Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson. Tell me, have you smoked a fresh cigarette lately? You have if you've smoked a Lucky Strike. For Luckies are definitely fresher, and it takes real freshness to bring you deep down smoking enjoyment. To prove that to yourself, just light up a Lucky. You'll find that Luckies taste better, not only fresher, but cleaner and smoother, too. That's because they're made of fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. And because they're made better, every Lucky is made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. And every pack of Luckies is extra tightly sealed to bring you that fine tobacco flavor in all its freshness. So be happy. Go lucky. Get the better taste you want in a cigarette and get it fresh. Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Bob <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the last time this season, we bring you a man who for the past 39 weeks has either entertained or bored you with his comedy. Hmm... A man who many of you will hate to see leave the air, and an equal number will jump for joy. Don, look. So here he is, folks. A man the whole world is anxious to hear, but on the other hand... Never mind. (laughs) Jack Benny, applause. (laughs) Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny who thrills or nauseates you, as the case may be, talking. (laughs) And just think, Don, this is the last time this season you'll be putting your blue-eyed boss on the pan. Oh, that's right, Jack. Time certainly flies. It sure does. What a season I've had. Radio every week, television once a month, stage appearances. Gosh, Don, I'm so exhausted I can hardly stand up. If I didn't have starch in my underwear, I'd fall right (laughs) (laughs) off. What a season. Gosh, Don, remember that show we did in San Diego and then that weekend we spent in Tijuana, huh? Oh, speaking of Tijuana, Jack, didn't you borrow $5 from me during our visit there? And then there was that wonderful time we had in New York and Boston. I said, didn't you borrow $5 from me during our visit to Tijuana? And then the three weeks we just spent in San Francisco. Gosh, what a city. I said, didn't you borrow $5 from me in Tijuana? Yes, and as soon as I get some Mexican money, I'll pay you back. (laughs) I never saw it. Oh, hello, Mary. Am I glad to see you. Hello, Jack. What are you yelling at Don for? Well, in the first place, I didn't like the introduction he gave me. Let me ask you something, Mary. Do I bore people? Certainly. Who said you didn't? (laughs) (laughs) Nobody said I didn't. I mean, Don said I did. Oh. By the way, Mary, what are you planning to do this summer? Well, my sister babe is coming to visit me, and we're going to spend a couple of weeks at Catalina. Oh, that's nice. You'll both get a good tan. I'll get a tan. Babe died for abalone. <laughs> oh, yes. With her feet, she doesn't need swim pins. <laughs> oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, this being our last program, how, uh, I... Uh, how do you feel, kid? Oh, I'm doing as well as can be expected. What do you mean? Well, who expects anything of me? <laughs> Nobody, believe me. Now, what were you going to ask me, Dennis? Well, this being our last program, I thought I'd ask you for the $10 you owe me. What $10? Don't you remember? You said if I loan you $10, you'd take me to the burlesque show. Dennis, I never took you to a burlesque show. I know. After I gave you the money, you told me I was too young to see it. (laughs) Oh, that's right. Well, I'll give you the 10 after the show, kid. Now, how about your singing your song, huh? Okay. Oh, hold a second, Dennis. When I got here, there was a message for me to call Rochester. 
I better do it before I forget. It may be important. That's okay. Go right ahead. Say, Mabel, what is it, Gaitin? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is switching. Yeah, I wonder what head of wax wants now. <laughs> Let him wait. Say, Gertrude, I saw you come in with a lot of packages. Were you shopping? Yeah, and my feet are killing me. But it's my own fault for buying such small shoes. Well, what size did you get? Nine. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. What's the matter? Getting your foot in a size nine shoe is like docking the Queen Mary in a lily cup. <laughs> well, look who's talking. Get a load of your shoes. Well, they're not so big. They're not? Last year, when we went on our vacation, every hotel we stopped at pasted labels on them. <laughs> well, it's a natural mistake, because my shoes are genuine cowhide. Cowhide? Yes. Yeah. From the way your toes stick out, it looks like milking time. <laughs> Operator. Yes, Mr. Benny. Well, it's about time, Gertrude. Didn't you hear me buzzing? Yeah, but I've only got two hands. Well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it isn't asking too much, will you ring my house? Yes, sir. You know, Mabel, I never saw a man like Mr. Benny. He has such a split personality. On the radio, he's one type of person, and in real life, he's an entirely different type of person. Yeah, and I don't like either one of them. <laughs> I know what you mean. That man is such a pest. Every time we're out together, all he wants to do is go up on Mulholland Drive and look down at the lights of the city. Well, that's romantic. Romantic nothing. He owns stock in the electric company. <laughs> Operator, did you get my house? Yeah, but the line is busy. I'll call you later. Thank you. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, I couldn't get Rochester, so you better sing your number. Okay, but I'm warning you, it's the last time this season. Sing! Sing already. <laughs> Bye. 
Dennis Day singing all by myself. And very good, too, Dennis. Thank you, Mr. Benny. And before I go on my vacation, I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you how much I enjoyed working with you the past 39 weeks, and I'll be looking forward to being with you again in the fall. Well, Dennis, that's, that's very sweet of you. So long, Mr. Benny. Dennis, the show isn't over yet. What's your hurry? I can't stand it here any longer. <laughs> Dennis! Dennis, come... Oh, let him go. What a silly kid. I ought to call oh, him back. Oh, Jack, Jack, forget it. After all, it is our last show of the season. I can't help it, Mary. Nobody on this show has any respect for me. Bob Crosby's the only one I can get a civil answer from. Oh, Bob. Bob, come over here. You called me, sir? <laughs> yes, Bob. You see Mary Sir yet. Yes. Well, Bob, you finished your first season, and you've worked for me for 39 weeks now. How do you feel? Hungry, sir. <laughs> Wait a minute, Bob. Are you trying to infer that, that I don't pay you enough? Well, Jack, you might not believe this, but I had a better year in 1943. Who were you with then? The Marines. <laughs> the Marines? Yeah, you're not the first one that I've said sir to. <laughs> oh, that's telling him, Bob. Be quiet, Mary. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, stop. By the way, Bob, what are you going to do this summer? Well, I'm waiting for my brother Bang to end his season, and he and I are going to Catalina for the summer. Oh, so you'll both get good tan. Bing will. I dive for abalone. <laughs> oh. Well, if a big fish swims by, say hello at maybe my sister Babe. <laughs> yes, yes, for me, too. By the way, Jack, I meant to ask you, who's going to be our summer replacement? Well, starting next Sunday at this same time and on the same stations, Lucky Strike will present Guy Lombardo. Who? Guy, Guy, Guy Lombardo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Sammy the drummer doing the boom boom. We woke him up just for that. You know? uh, say, Jack. Excuse me. Hello? I've reached your house, Mr. Benny. You may go ahead. Thank you. Hello? Oh, Hello? is that you, boss? Oh, yes, Rochester. I got the message to call you. What's up? I've got a big surprise for you, boss. I meant to tell you last night, but you were asleep when I got home. What is it, Rochester? I'm going to get married. <laughs> married? Yeah, you know how long Cuba's been shooting those arrows at me? Yes. Well, last night he hit me with a secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get married, eh, Rochester? Well, tell me all about it. How did it happen? Well, the night before last, I went to a party, and there she was. I met her at 10.40, and at 10.45, we were engaged. Well, that's pretty fast, isn't it, Rochester? You only knew her five minutes. Well, it's amazing what you can do when you meet someone if you don't waste time shaking hands. <laughs> Rochester, this must have been love at first sight. I never heard you talk this way before. Oh, yeah, boss. She's beautiful. Really? Describe her to me, Rochester. Well, boss, have you ever seen the sun as it sinks majestically into the waters of the tranquil Pacific? Yes. Well, put a sweater on it and that's her. <laughs> you know, Rochester, I feel a little sad about this. You've been with me all these years, and now you're going to get a wife and set up housekeeping for yourself. Oh, no, Mr. Benny, don't look at it that way. What do you mean? You ain't losing a butler, you're gaining a cook. <laughs> well, right now, I sure could use one. Anyway, good luck, Rochester. I hope you'll be very happy. Thanks, boss. Goodbye. Goodbye. that Rochester's going to get married. Oh, well. Pardon me, Mr. Benny. I realize that I won't be seeing you until next fall. I, that's three months, though. I decided to come back. And you want to apologize? No, I want my $10. <laughs> Dennis, I told you I, I'd give you the money. Now sit down and be quiet. What an ungrateful bunch. I'll be glad to start my vacation. Say, where are you going to spend the summer, Jack? I don't know. I'd like to go to London, maybe then go to Paris, Rome, Venice, you know. Jack, you wouldn't go to Venice after what happened the last time we were there. Well, what happened, Jack? 
Mary, it's not such a big thing. Well, I'm going to tell it anyway. Well, we were touring Europe, and we'd been in Paris, and then from Paris we went to Rome. Oh. And while in Rome, we decided to go to Venice. Oh, boy, I'll bet those canals in Venice must be fascinating. Oh, they're wonderful, Bob. Anyway, we arrived at night and checked into the Grandinelli Hotel, and the next morning I met Jack in the lobby. Jack, did you get the tickets for the sightseeing tour? Yes, Mary, and the gondola will leave in a few minutes. Oh, Signor Bani. Yes? I am the bel captain. Hmm? The gondola for the sightseeing tour, she will be uh, ready to leave. Are we getting a nice gondola? Oh, very nice. Uh, there is one that leaves in an hour, but uh, that one is more expensive. Why? On uh, that gondola, the singer is Mario Lanza. <laughs> oh, that's where he's working. <laughs> must tell Dory. Well, come on, Mary. <laughs> Gosh, Jack, what a thrill. You know, this is the first time I've ever been in a gondola. Yeah, I didn't know it held so many people. I'm sure glad we came out on the sightseeing tour. Oh, Jack, the guide is getting up to point out the places of interest. Yeah, come on, Mary, let's get closer to him. So many interesting things in Venice. I don't want to miss a word he says. Excuse me. Excuse me. Jack, you're close enough to him. Desidero molto distressa, i famosi e turisti palazzi che c'è sul mento. Ma questo uomo ha un piede sul mio. What do you say? What do you say? Huh? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Huh? What do you say? What do you say? Se ne fatto, se lo rompo in un naso, a me fa via. E ancora in pezzi in piedi. What do you say? What do you say? Jack. Just a minute, Mary. Say, mister, mister, do you understand Italian? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, good, good. What did he say? He said you're standing on his foot. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'll step back. Jack! <laughs> Mary! <laughs> Mary! Oh, oh, miss, shall I help you get him back into the boat, or, or did you push him? <laughs> please, will you please help me? Here, here, Jack, take my hand. Easy does it now. There we are. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, mister. Oh, boy, am I wet. Per piacere non mettere dietro in gondola, uomo con chiude mio cap. What'd he say? What'd he say, huh? What'd he say? He said you're dripping on his leg. <laughs> well, if he thinks I'm going to step back again, he's crazy. <laughs> say, wait a minute. Aren't you Jack Benny? Yes. Io sono più grande artista che il mondo sono visto. Well, now, wait a minute. I thought you couldn't speak Italian. Uh, what'd he say? He said he was one of the greatest comedians in the world. <laughs> that he can say in Chinese. Tu hang wang pu. Oh, Mary, please. No, noi abbiamo il piatto che famos perché la cante le gondolieri. What'd he say? What'd he say? Uh, he said we are now approaching the plaza, which is famous throughout the world for its singing gondoliers. Oh, yes. Look. See, all those people sitting out on the pier. Where else would you see anything like this? Oh, 
was that was wonderful, wasn't it, Mary? Yeah, it certainly was. You better sit down. Our gondola's starting to move again. Gosh, I wouldn't have missed this trip for anything. It's so picturesque here in Venice. Oh, Jack, look at those signs along the side of the canal. Signs? Yeah, I'll see if I can read them as we pass. Prendera un punta de uno que conozco. Talia tua Barbara, manan tua nato. Burma shave. <laughs> Where does it say Burma Shave? On that last sign. Bermada Radera. That's Burma Shave. Bermada Radera means Burma Shave? Holy smoke. I, I better learn what these Italian words mean. Why? I had that on my strawberries this morning. <laughs> and I liked it. I liked it. I'll just have... Jack, Jack, sit down. You're rocking the gondola, and we're getting into heavy traffic. Yeah, just look at all those gondolas going in every direction. It's a wonder they don't bump into each other. <laughs> what was that? Well, it's that man sitting over there in that little boat. He used to work for the traffic department. <laughs> hmm. What's the matter with him? He went crazy trying to paint a white line down the middle of the canal. <laughs> well, that is a problem. Why didn't he try watercolors? <laughs> Miss, are you sure you didn't push him? Of course not. Now help me get him in the boat. Okay. No, no, no. Don't grab him by the hair. <laughs> here. Uh, Jack, here's my hand. <coughs> These boats are too narrow. What do you mean, too narrow? You even fell off the lurling. <laughs> Only one. <laughs> See, I'm cold. I think I... I... I, I, a chew. Fraturarum coscia. Thank you. He said break a leg. <laughs> Gee, it, it sounds so nice in Italian. Jack, look, why don't you just sit down and enjoy the ride like everybody else? Okay, but gee, I'm so wet. Well, it's your own fault. Signori e signori, noi passiamo il famoso americano riunione spazio in Venezia. Uh, the guy just pointed out the famous American rendezvous in Venice called Harry's Bar. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I've heard of that. That's where all the Americans in Venice come for cocktails. Oh, we must go there, Jack. And say, Mary, Mary, did I tell you the wonderful joke I made up about Frankie Remley? I'm going to do it on our first broadcast next season. Look, you're on a vacation. Forget Joe. No, 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 Mary. This will be sensational. Oh, on the program will be great. Now, get this. I'm going to say that when we were in Venice, Frank Remley went into Harry's bar and sat down at a table with one of the natives. Remley took a drink, and then the native took a drink. Then Remley took another drink, and the native took another drink. They kept drinking and drinking till the native couldn't see anymore. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Mary, don't you get it? Remley is the first guy in the world ever to drink a Venetian blind. <laughs> Mary! Mary, don't you get it? Venetian... <laughs> Mary! Mary! Here, miss, I'll help you. Never mind. This time I pushed him. <laughs> Mary! <laughs> Mary! Mary, 
Mary, you made up the whole thing. That's not what happened in Venice. Now, Jack, I didn't exaggerate at all. That's exactly what it... Oh, wait a minute. Hello? Hello, boss. I got some more news for you. What is it now, Rochester? The wedding's off. I ain't gonna get married. Why? What happened? My girl ran off and married another fella. Oh, she didn't love you, eh? Oh, no. She loved me, boss, but she married for money. Oh, this other fella's rich? No, but he's got some. <laughs> All right, Rochester. So we won't have a cook. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment, but first a word to cigarette smokers. Nothing, no, nothing beats better taste. And remember... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky's strike me. Find tobacco richer tasting. Find tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. In spite of all you hear about cigarette smoking today, one basic truth remains. It's the taste of a cigarette that counts. Nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. There are good reasons for it. Lucky's are made better to taste better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. Naturally, that will give you a better smoke. Then, too, better taste in a cigarette must begin with the tobacco. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, mild tobacco with its own wonderful aroma and a taste that's even better. So remember, friends, only fine tobacco in a better-made cigarette can give you Lucky's better taste. And only better taste can give you the real deep-down smoking enjoyment you want. So be happy. Go Lucky. Next time, ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy. Go Lucky. Get better taste today. Ladies and gentlemen, since this is the last show of the season, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of my entire cast, my sponsors, the American Tobacco Company, to thank you for listening, and I hope you'll all be with us again when we resume broadcasting September 13th. In the meantime, starting next week, tune in at the same time, and you will hear Guy, Guy, Guy Lombardo. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Al Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Starting next Sunday at this same time and on this same station, Lucky Strike will present Guy Lombardo time. Tune in to hear Guy and the Royal Canadians play your favorite tunes each week until Jack Benny returns in the fall. And every Thursday over this same station, be sure to hear The American Way with Horace Height for Lucky Strike. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network.